I just hit 100,000 subscribers right here on YouTube three years ago. What? So what is this then? Like some kind of joke video or? No. I mean, it, it is a little bit funny. Like, of course, leave it to me to be, you know, well over three years overdue to, to post a video. But, you know, I, I just can't help it, man. I can't help being late. You know, I think a lot of times when I'm late, it's for like the standard reasons, uh, bad at time management or, you know, procrastination. I think we all fall victim to procrastination at times, right? Some more than others. Me more than most. But then there's times where I don't do something right away or when it seems like it's the right time because it doesn't feel like the right time. You know, when I hit 100,000 subscribers, there were kind of two things that, that prevented me from, you know, just kind of posting a video celebrating it. The first is that it happened during the McFabio saga. You know, and dude, that was the first of my seven day new account challenges. I was trying to push it to the limit, man. I didn't know what was possible. I had no clue, man. I just wanted to see how far I can get in seven days. That's it. There's no time to celebrate. I'm gaming over here, man. You know, too busy gaming to celebrate. It's, it's almost a little bit sad when you phrase it that way, but there was nothing sad about it. It was such a great time. And I was like, oh, I'll just make a video talking about it next week. You know, I said thank you during the live streams, of course, but I'll, I'll, make a, I'll make a dedicated video next week. And then next week came and it didn't feel right. You know, it, I think, you know, most people, when they hit a big milestone on YouTube, they make a video and it's focused around two words. Thank you. Those are the two words, right? And I can tell you, I can guarantee you that every person that's ever made a video saying those two words, they mean it. They say thank you. They mean it because that's what YouTube channels are. They are they are the you more than they are the me at times because without you guys, none of this exists. When you say words enough times, it could start to lose their meaning. You know, it could start to feel insincere even if it couldn't be further from the truth, even if it is completely sincere, right? So why now then? I'm posting a video tomorrow. And the video is nothing special, okay? Temper those expectations because it's just an interview, all right? In a world where we have everything at our fingertips, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can upload that's going to blow your guys' mind. This is just an interview. A thousand of them get posted every single day across the internet, probably more than that. It's an interview with Gabriel Frazero, one of the co-creators of MCOC. It's an hour and a half long, someone that I've interviewed many times in the past. Why is this one then different? Growing up, I, I heard the word potential a lot. It's a word that got thrown around. It's another one of those words that almost felt like it lost its meaning. I started to question, what, what does that even mean? Especially as a kid. I barely knew what the word meant anyway. And I would hear like teachers talk to my parents like, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Grant, your son has got a lot of potential. And I didn't know if they, if they meant it or... You know, especially as an adult, understanding that teachers are overworked and underpaid and they just spent the entire day, their entire morning and afternoon, you know, chasing around 30 little turds in a classroom. And the last thing they want to do is to be staying late, having a parent teacher conference when really what they want to do is just go home, heat up some food, watch a little TV before going to bed to have to do it all again the next day. So I didn't know if they meant it when they said potential or if what they really wanted to say and they were just being nice was, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Grant, uh, your son doesn't seem to give a shit at all about anything going on in the classroom, and it would sure be nice if you could just find a way to keep him awake, that way he's not snoring and disturbing the rest of the kids, that seemed like they at least uh, care a little bit, care enough to, to pay attention, you know? Because I would, I would just sleep all day long, I would have a one-subject notebook, uh, tucked away in my backpack that I would just kind of curl up with on the desk, drool just 
you know, flowing out of my mouth. And teachers would try to wake me, of course. They would drop a book, a, a, a you know, huge textbook on the ground that would slam or they would or they would slam a ruler into my desk. And I would wake up, sure. Uh the days that they that they did that, because they didn't even do that most days, but even the times where I wasn't physically sleeping, I was just staring out the window, just daydreaming, thinking about anything, anything at all about, except for what whatever was going on in the classroom, because I hated school, man. Just the thought of being trapped behind four brick walls, being, you know, somewhat forced to learn things that just, just I don't care about, you know, I... Most of those things I still don't care about as an adult. As an adult, yes, I understand some of them are like, you know, foundational building blocks, whatever you want to say, whatever whatever fancy words you want to throw around. But the reality is, even as an adult, most of the stuff, if I think back on it, I just don't care about it. Don't care about it today. I damn sure didn't care about it as a kid. I couldn't see any ways that they would connect to things that I cared about in the future. And, you know, on YouTube, I think it's easy to boil things down to numbers. How many subscribers does a channel have? How many views does a video have? How many people hit the like button? Even when it comes to the very generous monetary support that you guys have given to me, Sometimes those can just be boiled down to a number. And I think when it comes to money, it's at least easier to understand. It's at least easier to see, okay, we, we know the value of, of a dollar, right? Or in some cases, many dollars and what that can do. So it's, it's, it's a bit easier to make that connection. It's not always as easy to see what the rest of the numbers represent. You know, for me, it kind of gave me something to push for, you know, something to focus on, something that I did care about, something that I could connect to things that I wanted to learn. Because I, I love learning, man. I just hated school, but I really love learning. You know, it took me so many years to, to figure that out and to understand that. It's kind of feeling like broken at times of like, well, why don't I care about any of this stuff? Aren't I supposed to care about it? And through having that sort of, that purpose and that drive, it allowed me to start with absolutely nothing. Not even the, 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 the I couldn't even fathom the idea of like how do you record something on your phone you know especially like seven years ago is a little bit harder to do then than it is today but even today i would totally understand if someone's looking to start a youtube channel and they're just like dude i don't even know where to begin because i damn sure didn't know where to begin seven years ago and little by little picking up just uh, uh, something new every day you know not even starting with like a, a a camera on my face here because even that you know, most channels, if you notice, don't start with something like that. Because even that adds so many more layers to it of like, oh, do, you know, how do I even set up a camera? How do I, uh, the tripod, it doesn't even fit on my desk. How do you, well, how does, the, how does that work? Uh, how do you make sure it's it's recording? How do you sync that up with the video? Um, do, I, do I really want my face even out there? What does that even mean? You know, there's like all these additional hurdles, things that you might not even consider until you're, you're faced with actually doing them let alone getting into like editing software and you know how do you make a thumbnail not just how do you actually set a thumbnail but how do you make it interesting how do you make it look good enough to to click on dude all these things they're difficult you know and they get easier over time but they're still difficult it's still a challenge it's still a challenge every single day not for all videos of course you know, there's certain videos that I've made enough times that I can do them in my sleep. But to make a good video, I don't think it ever stops being a challenge. It's a challenge that's exciting. And what you guys have given to me through subscribing and watching videos and 
monetary support, and, and just all of that stuff. The best way I can kind of put it is in this game, we, we kind of focus on like roster progression, right? Sometimes account progression when it comes to like a progression title or something, right? But it's, it's like mostly roster progression. And what you guys have given me is, is, is not the ability to progress a roster or an account, but me, you know? Starting with nothing and, and, and getting to where I am, it's still, I'm still in like the, the not, I don't even qualify for the minor leagues, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Like, uh, again, the, 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 the video I'm posting tomorrow, it's just an interview. It's an interview with Gabe, and I've interviewed him many times in the past. The first time I interviewed him was seven years ago, and I didn't know what to say then. I didn't know what to ask. I just wanted to kind of stand there and, and just hope that somehow Gabe would impart some sort of wisdom into me. And in some ways that worked. You know, it's that old saying, like, showing up is half the battle, you know? It's, I didn't know what to ask, though, that that would, you know, be interesting for Gabe to talk about. Uh, I, I didn't know... If I was, you know, recording it, what would other people be interested in? And I took this opportunity to look to some of the best of the best. Now that I have a handle on, you know, some of the basics about making videos to like what makes a good interview. And I look to like Sean Evans of Hot Ones, you know, I consider him to be one of the absolute best of the best, complete 10 out of 10. And what he describes at, for his interviews are thoughtful, career-spanning interviews. Like, that's the simplest way that he breaks it down. So I tried to replicate that. But then I also looked to other great interviewers and, you know, picked up little pieces here and there. Like, how do conversations usually start? Do you come in hot with some heavy-hitting questions? Or, no, actually, you don't. You know, the advice that I, I heard from people is... is you know, start with an easy question. Get the conversation sort of warmed up before you, you know, you don't want to just catch someone off guard. Off guard. They're going to sort of turtle up. They're not going to really, you know, express the things that you want them to express, the things that you're trying to, to get out of the conversation that way. So start it off light and maybe get into some, some heavier things a little bit. I did hours of research trying to figure out what questions I even wanted to ask and then reordering them. What's a good flow for the conversation? If it goes this way, I need to be ready with a, with a, with a question that's over here, you know, or somehow bridge uh, the different things. It's things that I can't really put into words, things that you might not notice if you just watch the interview. Um, and that's fine. You don't need to notice them. The reason I'm making this video, again, is not to like hype it up or anything, because it's it's just an interview. It's all it'll ever be. But when I say thank you, I need you guys to understand that I'm not thanking you just for some number on the screen or on the internet. It's It's a thank you for allowing me to at least find a way to try, you know? And if Sean Evans is a 10 out of 10 and I was a one out of 10 seven years ago, I'm like a five now. And that feels pretty good. And I know that sometimes you could look at this channel and see, oh, I don't post as many videos as I used to, or I don't try in the game as much as I used to. And even though I can't, you know, always talk about the things that I'm, I'm doing behind the scenes, because when I did that in the past, it just ended up in, in failure, you know, of working on a website or whatever, right? Take any of the examples over the years where let you guys down in some way. I've learned from that and I just have to keep things kind of to myself for right now at least. But need you guys to understand that you've helped me progress. You've helped me Focus on things that I actually care about. Give me a reason. Give me a sense of purpose. And the fire that has been ignited inside me, that's been building over these last, last seven years, it's, it's, it's brighter and hotter than it's ever been, even if it doesn't look like it. And it's a fire that you guys have largely helped to ignite. 
So thank you.